Um, so okay. yeah, please um, 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 in your own time. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. Yes. <laughs> so thanks very much for organizing uh, the meeting. Um, I'm enjoying it very much, and I'm also looking forward for the different discussions. Um, so um, let me maybe very briefly um, say a few words uh, on quantum simulation, since it's a kind of a, a, a key topic of this workshop. So, oops, uh, I have a little hiccup here with my. Okay, quantum simulation. Okay, sometimes, I mean, I, I'm not sure whether I'm the, the only one, but sometimes one has the feeling that quantum, simula uh, quantum computing is eating up quantum simulation. Um, and uh, part of the reason is not so much that quantum simulation is not continuously producing fantastic results, but sometimes I think uh, the narrative of uh, quantum simula simulation is not as clear as the narrative of uh, quantum computing. So maybe uh, how, how could one look at uh, quantum simulation? I, I think a way how to look at it is that you take some many body system and then you define, well, for example, particles in a trap and then you have a certain energy range of the low low energy uh, range where the system is completely de described by a a hamiltonian and this hamiltonian is a very well defined uh, concept so it's not that uh, the hamiltonian kind of phenomenologically describes what you observe but you know exactly what the equation in your system is in a certain energy uh, range. And uh, an example uh, for that are, of course, both Einstein, Conseil, Superfluid, Fermi, Hubbard, and so forth, uh, you name it. Um, let me look a bit at uh, some examples a bit more precisely, okay? Because there are different questions that you can ask and address uh, with uh, quantum simulation. So one uh, approach to quantum simulation is that you answer, try to provide answers to open questions. And um, my feeling is that for any quantum device that will be built, uh, the first useful question that will be answered is will still be the Fermi Hubble model where you get uh, from a machine a useful answer. Okay, so that's one direction, but there are many more directions in uh, quantum simulation. One, one is to realize fundamental concepts and a nice way, a nice example are super solids, for example. I mean, in quantum simulation, you, you reduce uh, the concept to the very bare bone and then you try to realize and in Super solids, it's, it's combining non trivial diagonal long range order and off diagonal long range order. Uh, and uh, the simplest way, well, one very simple way to realize it is take two cavities and you break a continuous symmetry and you have a super uh, fluid. And then you can measure, for example, Higgs and Goldstone modes. You can even not only measure the energy of these modes, but you can measure their phase and amplitude. Uh, character as shown here. Another type of concepts is, for example, topological models, for example, a topological Haldane model. In that case, uh, Haldane himself said that it's unlikely uh, that it would be realized, but indeed one, one could uh, nevertheless realize it. Another uh, uh, direction of quantum simulation, which uh, uh, is, is, still, uh, is a bit younger, that's quantum simulation of devices, that you not only try to simulate one Hamiltonian, but maybe uh, add some uh, functionality uh, to it. And, and what is shown here is a, uh, the demonstration of quantized uh, conductance through a spin-selective uh, atomic point function. Um, and then another, uh, maybe one of the nicest aspects is uh, that you 
might encounter unexpected phenomena. And on the other hand, since you have a Hamiltonian, which is so well described, one, one should be able uh, to explain them once one uh, observes them. Okay, but let me start with advanced Harvard models and most specifically um, Floquet engineering in, in Hubbard models. And Hubbard models, they have, or optical lattices, have two aspects to it. One aspect is that you can uh, create strongly correlated systems, mod insulator quantum magnetism. And the other aspect is you can look at um, um, ma magnetic fields or you can uh, kind of uh, get uh, introduce gauge fields. And that is usually done in driven systems. Often it is done uh, in two-dimensional uh, uh, lattices. And a question is how can you combine those two uh, paradigms? And that's what I, there I want to show you an example. And the example is um, to introduce a term in the Hamiltonian which describes a density-dependent tunneling which had already been de demonstrated, but we, we want to have a density-dependent tunneling with an engineered non-trivial pile space. Okay, so what do we mean? So you have a tunneling particle from one side to the other side, and then you have another particle where there is now on the other side another particle, and now not only does T change the amplitude, but you also want now a psi uh, that you change, that is changed depending on the presence on the other, of the other particle. So basically you want to have a term in your Hamiltonian where T and the phase of the tunneling matrix elements are uh, operators. Okay, why would you want that? Um, uh, th these type of uh, um, uh, elements in the Hamiltonian, they are uh, important for lattice uh, gauge theories where you have uh, gauge uh, bosons and kind of uh, matter particles um, um, fermions. Okay, and there have been quite some um, proposals on doing quantum simulation of lattice gauge theories and also some uh, kind of basic uh, realization of these first parts of the concepts. I mean, the way we are, what I will talk about is closest uh, to the, the minimal version, ladder version that was proposed by Luca Babio and colleagues. So that's the last, uh, the uh, proposal on the last line here on the field graph. Um, even though, I mean, our, the way we create this pile space, that's uh, quite different to, to what they that was in their proposal, but one can use it um, for such a proposal. Okay, what, what's happening in the classical um, gauge, static gauge field? Basically, you have a particle, say, tunneling on a lattice, and if it tunnels once around, then uh, it picks up a phase, okay, if it tunnels in a circle. And now, what we want to have, uh, we want to have a, a quantized or dynamic gauge field, Okay, here a, tunnel, a particle uh, uh, tunnels around, the matter particle, uh, it doesn't pick up a phase. Now, if there is another particle, then you want it to pick up a phase. So, and that's why uh, you need to have this density dependent uh, pile space. Okay, so um, th this work has to be seen in the context of also of other people work. There is Monica Eidelsberger. They, they did very nice work recently uh, in similar direction and also changing. Okay, so what you need here is some serious um, tunnel engineering. Um, tunnel engineering in Switzerland, we are experts on tunnel engineering and this is a photograph of the um, new uh, Gotthard tunnel between Switzerland and Italy. And uh, in the press release, when it was opened, it also said, okay, thanks uh, to scientific calculations, costly delays were avoided. Okay, so one needs to, to do some thinking before the, uh, the doing. 
Okay, and tunnel engineering also, um, there are in the quantum regime, there are also people working on that, and there have been ideas and also experiments which are related what, to what we do. Um, they, those are shown here. Okay, but what is our system? Okay, our system is a, a Fermi Harvard model, and it has this uh, special um, lattice with a hexagonal structure and we uh, shake it okay we here we shake it along one axis and um, we can also dimerize it and if we dimerize it the nice thing is that on the dimer we can actually quantitatively measure the tunneling matrix element in the presence of another particle and um, we can measure um, well its phase and and its amplitude okay and that's what i will uh, explain and uh, the ideas here. I mean, our observables, I should maybe say, is uh, double occupancy on the sites, and we can measure whether we have singlets. And, and these two states uh, will form a two level system which we will uh, couple and which gives our phase. Okay, so here, here's the, here comes the idea. Okay, so we have those two sites. Let's assume we have a singlet first on this side, and we want to couple it uh, to a, a doubly occupied side, as indicated here with a red and blue particle. And now we drive this uh, coupling, because there's an energy difference, but we don't drive it just with a single frequency, but we drive it with two frequency, well, one times the, the, the directly and in a two photon transition. Okay, and, and that's we do by piezo shaking. So we shake it and we can now we can control the amplitudes of those two drives. And there is a relative phase, as you can see. And with this relative phase, we can also break time, time reversal symmetry and make sure that we cannot trivially um, uh, uh, get rid of uh, our phase. Okay, and also you can look at it in terms of a two-level system between a singlet and the doubly occupied sites and two driving, uh, uh, two couplings between the, between these two levels. And these two couplings, well, they, you can write them as one effective coupling put together by these two matrix elements, which have a relative phase that we can uh, control and then you get this lower line there. Uh, and you can also, I mean, a way how you can think of it is simply by adding up two vectors in complex space, and then you get the black, uh, the, the brown vector as a resulting vector. And uh, you can now within the parameter space, you can encircle a singularity in your in your face as it's demonstrated on the or shown on the left hand side okay so so how do we measure that so we measure we use a trick to measure that so it's a kind of an interferometric interferometric measurement and uh, the trick is that we can switch on and off uh, uh, the interactions and that we do by switching the particle from a collisional interacting state to a collisional non-interacting state. So then effectively we have an interferometer where we split adiabatically our, and um, go into um, the superposition of ground and excited state of our two level system. And then we close the interferometer when switching off the interaction. And that way we can determine uh, the phase of, uh, of our uh, Hamiltonian. So basically, you can look at it as uh, an interferometer. You divide into, you, you split your state, and then you close it with a non interacting situation. And then you can uh, determine the relative phase by winding the com common phase. And that's the data that is shown on the right hand side. And, and from each set of such data, you can um, determine the relative phase or the phase of the matrix element. 
And uh, the measurements uh, are shown here. This is, these are the phase measurements of our matrix element. And the, they are on the right-hand side. The upper line is where we uh, don't have a, a jump of pi in the phase. And the lower line uh, there is um, uh, where we, we observe a sudden phase jump. We can also measure uh, the matrix element, the, uh, the absolute value of the ma matrix element in a dynamic measurement where we uh, 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 scan over the uh, crossing kind of in, in a landau sena type way. And these measurements are shown here. And there you see where we have the phase singularity. We have uh, also the smallest value of this matrix element. OK, so that means we have shown that you can, using a double frequency drive, you can engineer a matrix element with a non-trivial pile space uh, that depends on the presence of another particle, which uh, then acts as uh, the, the gauge particle. Okay, so the route towards uh, quantum simulation of lattice gauge theories is long. I will not describe it in detail, so it's a little bit outlined here. Um, I think the, uh, the concept, uh, conceptually, one will move forward quite straightforwardly to get, of course, precise measurement, which might compete with uh, techniques, uh, existing numerical techniques that might, again, be uh, quite difficult. But um, one might uh, be able to uh, create also novel many, many body states. And there are more routes, other routes from other people. I mean, there was recently a very nice uh, paper by Antoine Provet uh, on Rydberg atoms using actually a rather similar scheme as uh, we did. You can see that in this adding up uh, of the uh, three vectors to get a new matrix element. Okay, um, now the Floquet engineering. Okay, so the uh, important part here was the Floquet engineering, but Floquet engineering you often hear also Floquet heating and losses. And then one, one might get disappointed. Um, maybe it all doesn't work as well as one wishes. Um, I looked a bit around what is actually, uh, who is responsible for that. Um, so then I looked for Floquet and I found someone. I found in Wikipedia Charles uh, Floquet. So I looked a bit what he uh, did, and he was uh, Minister of the Interior, so maybe, yes, responsible if things go wrong. Uh, but he was um, just a um, contemporary of, um, uh, of Gaston Floquet, who, who actually is the person who, who invented uh, the Floquet theory, but he was a contemporary. But really, the question, of course, uh, should be that one should ask um, what is responsible for Floquet heating. And we had this quite funny um, occurrence that uh, in our system, the Floquet heating usually was much less of a problem than from some other experimental colleagues. And they, they were sometimes a bit skeptical. Why does it work so well in our case? And we looked at that uh, in particular for the case of this hexagonal lattice. And there we could see that by driving near the, the uh, resonance U, near the uh, on-site interaction, that we could see enhanced uh, magnetic correlations in the presence of the driving. So that was uh, uh, somewhat a surprise that one has these long-lived correlations. And the reason for that is actually that the band structure, compared to cubic lattice, which made most people use, that the band structure uh, is, has much flatter, higher bands. And this means that for multi-photon transition, multi-photon transition, um, you have gaps, you find gaps in the band structure that we use, even though otherwise from the dynamics, it's, it's as fast as the other one. 
but you see on the right hand side uh, that that left to much longer uh, lifetimes of our systems uh, compared uh, to the cubic level. So we, we thought, okay, that, so to avoid these processes to higher bands, you can also use other tricks and there you can use uh, two, two pass interference again. So you could now, if your if a multi photon process bugs you, then you can apply double the frequency or multiple frequency and with the right sign and avoid the excitation to the higher band. And we, we tried that and um, we, here you see the scanning the relative phase and we measure the number of atoms which remained in the ground band and we see a, a nice peak at the given phase where you, you get uh, destructive interference. And we could also see that uh, the for interaction that it works for. So this are example with a kilohertz interaction. Um, the atom number in the ground band was high, double occupancy and nearest neighbor correlation there we even saw uh, uh, almost three orders of magnitude improvement. So we were very happy with that. So now I will come um, to the last part and that is unexpected um, phenomena. Okay, and that it happens in a driven dissipative in the acting quantum many body system. Sounds horrible, but it, it's not as horrible as it sounds. Okay, so what did we see? Okay, maybe just first conceptually, what did we see? We saw a phase diagram, which is uh, shown in the following way. So on the horizontal axis, you see the a soft mode spacing of two soft modes. So we have in the system, the system can form a density mode and a spin mode. And um, those can both get soft. And you see uh, uh, in the vertical axis of this phase diagram, we see a, uh, a as a function of increasing a monotonic increasing function of dissipation. So we increase dissipation. We see an orange region which is instable. And here, the dissipation does not lead to some little shift of a phase, but it, it causes or is the origin of a whole in, instable, um, the dynamically instable region. Okay, the system we, we look at is um, our um, uh, Bose-Einstein condensate in, um, in a cavity, and there are so, so there are some experimental, so many experimental groups are working on that. Um, I uh, briefly remind you what is mainly happening in, in this system, and um, so that's a Bose-Einstein constant in the cavity. You shine light from the side on it, off resonant light, and then if you increase the intensity at some point it starts to self-organize and scatter into the cavity. And this phase transition is uh, um, a phase transition between minimizing zero point motion or potential energy. So at low pump power, it tries to minimize the kinetic energy. At higher pump power, it uh, gains in uh, potential, it can lower its potential energy and organize in those two phases. So it breaks spontaneously uh, a C2 symmetry. And can, this can be mapped to the decay uh, phase transition. Okay, so now let's make this, extend this system and put a spinal condensate into this cavity. And now you, you can imagine with the spinal condensate, you have an additional degree of freedom. And that degree of freedom is that the system can also arrange in a spin pattern. And you have with the spinal condensate, in addition to um, using the, yeah, I mean, since you have uh, additional magnetic sublevels, you can also have not only a scalar, but also vectorial light coupling. So this, these ingredients are added. And um, how much vectorial or scalar light coupling you have, you uh, can just arrange using the polarization of the drive, which is uh, indicated in the brown line. Okay, what, what type of phases can you get? You can get, again, a density mode. 
So um, if you pump more, this density mode uh, softens and you can form, uh, can have phase transition and finally form such a pattern. Okay, but there is another, and that breaks the C2 symmetry. There's another mode that gets off and that's a spin mode. Here you have on every side an atom, but one uh, scatters with 90 degree forward, the other 90 degree back backward. That's why um, um, you can get uh, now such a pattern and constructively interfere into the cavity mode. Okay, and if you can observe, um, you can observe that uh, as a function of this pump field uh, polarization, you have either this density mode or on the right hand side, the uh, spin mode. Okay, and we were now interested, what is happening here in, oops, um, in the region of uh, the critical angle where you jump from one uh, to the other phase. So what, what is happening there? So we were zooming in there. And then what we observed, uh, was the following. Okay, so on one hand, in a certain region, we observe just the normal decay phase transition. So you increase the pump power and then you observe the phase transition. And if you do a heterodyne measurement, uh, then you see uh, you, uh, the light outcoming light field locks to a certain phase. And now, we changed uh, the polarization and then we saw also regions where you see the following. Again, you increase the pump power and you see light in the cavity, a bit more jumpy. And then you also look here and then you see, oh, the face is now no longer locked, but is moving, okay? So you have a continuous movement of uh, the face. You have a running phase in the system. So it seems that the system is continuously changing. And also we could look at the frequency of that scattered light. So in the one case, the earlier the left-hand side, the normal decay, you just scatter them with the same light as you come in. And in the other case, you have a, a red and a blue detuned sideband or one, one of them. So, so you 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 continuously drive uh, this system, you pump energy in the system. Okay, so, so what is happening um, there? How, how can one explain this? So you have, as I had uh, uh, explained, you have this spinal BC and it couples via one quadrature of the cavity mode, it couples uh, to the density mode. So that new density mode gets off and the spin mode gets off the same story as I've told you now. And the next point, I mean, there you would say, okay, those since they couple to uh, um, um, orthogonal quadratures, they, they, they would not interact with each other. However, you also have the cavity decay. And the cavity decay, so that photons leak out of the cavity and at the same time give you a signal, this cavity decay couples dissipatively those two modes. And this leads now to a, uh, an instability which um, continuously moves uh, in a circle. So kind of you have a, a, a density mode, then this is an effective force which uh, drives the system into the spin mode, into the even spin mode, and then you go to the odd density mode, even, even uh, spin mode, odd uh, density mode, and so forth. So, so it, it drives the system uh, in a circle and one can also uh, imagine it if you think of the spin pattern and this as a time axis. So you, you have density pattern, spin pattern, density pattern, spin pattern, and the frequency depends on the difference of your soft uh, or soft mode frequencies. And here is now the phase diagram. You have the polarization angle, uh, 
Um, so the vectorial versus uh, scalar-like coupling and uh, the change of uh, effective uh, decay by changing the cavity detuning. And this gives you uh, the region of instability. And one can also go into uh, regions where we have uh, in a shallow lattice where we get very stable uh, frequency output offset, but very stable, so that reminds one uh, of, of limit cycles. Um, so to conclude, oops, uh, to conclude, um, we looked at the density dependent pile space and also got solutions to the Floche heating problem. And uh, on the right hand side is uh, the, the dynamical instability uh, phase in dissipation in use that I just talked about. And I would like uh, to thank uh, my team uh, uh, very much. It's a great pleasure uh, to work with each of them. Um, the, the Lattice uh, team uh, is uh, led by Konrad Wiebahn and uh, the work of uh, the, the, the Cavity team that um, is uh, led uh, by uh, um, uh, uh, Francesco Ferri. And uh, maybe um, to wrap up um, with the early introduction, so I think the picture for quantum simulation is more like this, that actually um, it's not going to eat up uh, quantum computing because there's just much too much to eat and it will take a long time to build quantum computers that can uh, actually create the equivalent many body systems that we can uh, create in quantum uh, simulators. I would like to uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thank you very much, Tillman. Um, so a virtual round of applause. Um, so once again, if you have questions, please either say in the chat or if you raise your hand in the participant list, I'll be able to see those. While waiting for questions from the audience, um, with, with your um, simulation of lattice gauge theories, is it yet possible to do something where your, your things which are simulating the gauge field have the Maxwell action or do they have some other dynamics? Yes, so um, to, to get uh, to kind of a minimal version of the uh, of, of a gauge uh, field theory, there, there you need to be able to localize uh, uh, your particles. So, so there are additional constraints which you have to put in, which you may put in by uh, a, a gradients, by using uh, uh, two species. So it, it's... Um, I would say it's, of course, more complicated than what we did. So, so our ingredient was this interaction ingredient, but it's not out, out of range, and not at all, I would say. Okay, thank you. Um, so there is a question from Vincent, so I will ask him to unmute. Yep, go ahead, Vincent. Hey, Tilma, enjoy the hey, talk hey. all the time, every time. <laughs> uh, question for you, I think you must have thought a lot. Uh, I think Peter Zoller and uh, many other collaborators with him had been thinking about dynamical gauge theory. So you're talking about the gauge use the lattice to simulate the gauge uh, related problem. But I think most times uh, in the community of code atoms, uh, it's more like the external gauge field. So the question is, do you have any thought to do like a we need simulate photons, right? The gauge fields with the dynamics covered to the matter. Well, I mean, the, um, as, a, 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 again, as I said, the, the, the proposal by, by Luca and colleagues, that is, I think, the closest where you can kind of on a ladder system where you can modulate it. I, I think that is a proposal for something which uh, can realistically work without being out of, yeah, to so be what, too what crazy. The, what the, what the particle, what, so what uh, physical well, you would, atoms you would could, play the degrees of freedom of the gauge? Uh, you, 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 could, you could, I mean, you, you, uh, you have your, well, 
you see you, you go into a configuration space and uh, in the configuration, so one configuration will then mean the, the field in one direction, other configuration field in other direction. So you can, can do this mapping and then you need, well, you could take two, two types of species and then uh, implement. Yes, I, I think yeah, you, you can then implement that. And um, I'm going to do. I'm going to do and that. Have, and see phase trans. I mean, there are phase transitions uh, that you could observe, and you could also. And I think that's also a very interesting aspect. Um, you you could wonder uh, what new phases you can have if you include uh, this term in the Hamiltonian. And personally, my approach is more in this direction because. Uh, that will yield answers more quickly because then we look for the experimentally easiest realizable system rather than the purest system. <laughs> that, okay. So that's, yeah, that would be my approach. <laughs> okay, um, thank you very much. Let me just ask if there are any other questions. Seems not. So um, thank you again, Tillman. Um, and I'll ask you to stop sh sharing your screen and then Monica should be able to share hers. Yes, okay. Um, so um, let me, I have to find the right, yeah, stop share, that should do it. Huh? Okay. okay.